and welcome to my reaction video of Stranger Things Season 4, Part 1. Let's get to it. Just the vessel. Yeah, he uses mind powers. For Satan. He's made a pact yeah, with see? the devil. Now He's all about the dungeons and the dragons. Evil incarnate. Okay, at the start of this episode, it looks like Jason, the basketball player, the jock, he has gone... The way I thought was most likely, I I wanted it to be the guess that he would see that it wasn't Eddie and things would change because now he realizes, okay, something's going on here that I do not understand. But instead, he has doubled down on the whole D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons makes you crazy, I think is the argument, basically. It makes you confuse reality with fantasy and you become like a vessel for satan apparently i wasn't really expecting the the vessel for satan comment from jason to the cops where he's like he's doing like satan's work now okay but i suppose that's what they said in real life too back in the day was that People who were playing this fantasy role-playing game were actually in a satanic cult, and oh no, so dangerous. Meaning a literal dive into water, or a fall? I'm gonna assume literal on the show, but who knows. Let's do predictions for the episode. Hmm, I think... Well, I'm sure we'll see Eleven. I'll probably be irritated by more of the retconning they're gonna be doing with her backstory. <sighs> I know I just gotta get over it and accept it. I just uh, bothers me. I know I need I just just let it go and <laughs> enjoy everything else that's good around it. It's just such a core concept. They're clearly doing this to make it seem like. All along, they had a plan since season one. And I know they didn't. Besides watching the show and being able to tell that they're making it up as they go season to season. We all know back when season one came out that originally they intended to do anthology type, uh, type seasons. So there'd be a new cast of characters each season. That part really bugs me. But ignoring that, then other predictions we got... Our main group, not really clear what their plan is. Now they're trying to investigate where he was attacking from. They're like, okay, we need to figure out a way to get to him in the Upside Down, since that's where he's attacking from somehow. They'll be figuring that out this episode, I'm sure. I, I, don't, I don't really understand. My best guess is since this creature can attack from the upside down it can somehow open gates in order to do it because i'm pretty sure the only way that makes sense for this thing to be attacking from the upside down is it has to have a gate open that's the only way to affect both sides in season two it was a mind flare acting from the upside down but there was a gate open so it was able to have influence and all that pretty sure Okay, you have to have a gate open, so there's got to be a gate somewhere. Okay, then we got Mike's group and them. Mm, they're going to see Susie in Utah, so they'll see her. I'm sure she'll use her super hacking ability, which is super convenient for her to have. And they'll figure out where Eleven is, maybe, or at least get a better idea. Or be able to contact somebody. Is that everybody? Are those our corners? Isn't there another group out there somewhere? No, right? It's just the people back in Hawk. Oh, Russia. I knew I was forgetting somebody. Russia. Alright. They crashed the plane, but I'm sure everybody's going to be fine somehow. They'll, they'll be like, maybe a bruise on them. But probably not. They'll just be fine. Then we got Mary and Joyce in Russia taking the plane back, or, well, they crashed it after they took it back, getting control of Yuri so that he can't 
take them in. So I'm sure they'll come up with some kind of plan to try to get Hopper. And we'll see. I thought you said you were going to let him die if he didn't tell you. Where's the girl? See if you rechange your mind. He has no reason to believe you. I still don't understand the point of the U.S. military guys here. Is it just to show us that they exist and they're doing something? Because I can't really see a point of having them. They're just there being bad because apparently military is bad. And they torture people and kill people and I don't know. I don't really understand why the scientist government people are somehow separate from the military. I thought they were the same. Ah, I, don't. <laughs> I just don't get the point of them. I wish they weren't in this season. I highly doubt they'll ever do anything that's worth anything. They're just clearly here to be another antagonistic force. <sighs> unless... No, that's not even a good... I was going to say unless they're just here so that they can be in the, the, the last season and have an effect. But no, screw it. You don't put them in something to have nothing to do and then have them have something to do in the next season. So that can't be it. I'm just trying to make excuses. I don't understand why the military is here. They're pointless. And that is all. When you were attacked last year, I believed that your signals were scrambled in much the same way. But why, though? What a dumb reason to excuse the fact that Eleven doesn't remember any of this until now. Conveniently. She forgot everything about the lab. Or worse, some of this she did remember, but we just had zero hint of it existing. Because, you know, it didn't exist. It's just a terrible excuse. Really? Stroke? That's what we're going with? That parallel, that she had trauma, so convenient amnesia, and convenient loss of ability. And then she got attacked, and that was an, also a traumatic thing somehow to her brain, in, even though it was in her leg. And I know you show, you're full of it. The show expects us to believe what happened was so traumatic that she doesn't remember what really happened. And it somehow ties into her ability to use her powers, which does not make any sense. If you think about all the different traumas and things that she had to do and experience all through seasons 1, 2, and 3, that wasn't traumatic enough to cause her to lose her powers or to lose memory. Yeah, I don't think so. There's no way whatever happened could be so traumatic compared to the first three seasons situations that she went through there's no way it's not gonna hold up i appreciate your understanding <laughs> it's about as useful as that cop has ever been thumbs up guys we are going to put kids here and let's make them as insane as possible so that's what people will think religious people in utah are like i'm not understanding the joke is there something i'm missing Anyway, yeah, they're really crazy and weird and not acting like kids. It's pretty bizarre. Then we have Murray and Yuri and Joyce, who, yes, they have him prisoner now instead and intend to get him to tell them where the prison is and help them further. And I like that they brought the bear thing back around to be like, oh, there could be a bear out here. <laughs> kind of using his own opening joke to them against him. It's pretty great. <laughs> I was thinking that too. <laughs> I was like, I don't think they'd send all of y'all at once. I mean, what do I know? Maybe they do now. That'd be a bit much for it to eat. That was my first thought was, oh, last supper and yeah. Because they're not going to just give them a whole feast and then send them to die. Well, they did do that, but rather not as like a nice thing or <laughs> to make them strong. It was clearly just, here, fatten you up for it to eat. Make you taste better. That was immediately my thought when I saw the meal was, oh, that's supper. Although the food tastes good, I will enjoy. Especially if I might be dead the, the next day or whenever they're supposed to fight this thing. Maybe we'll save that story for another day. It doesn't have a happy ending, I'm afraid. 
because he's you. He was a lot like you. Everything you won. was hard for I know I complain about the Eleven and Brenner retcon backstory stuff all the time, but I am happy to see him and Owens working together with Eleven. That's pretty cool. Brings back memories of that first season and second season. And you get to see the two scientists guys doing their job together with Eleven, of course. Who is apparently the sole survivor or whatever. It's uh, staying positive. I'm not going to go back to the obvious recon. Okay. I like how they're having a difference of opinion on how to handle it constantly. Well, like one guy is always like, hurry up, hurry up. But also, <laughs> and the other guy, he speaks sort of, uh, how, how should I put this? He, he prefers to sound dramatic really is how I would put it. He likes to say things that are I don't want to say abnormal but a bit. But yes I'm calling it now. The creepy dude, he's one. There's no doubt. It's pretty obvious. So I hope it's not supposed to be a twist. He acts creepy and the way he was talking about the missing one, I was like, it's gotta be you. And Eleven's a little at this point so I'll give her a pass for not realizing Hopefully, viewers are picking up on that, because I'm, I'm, I'm barely even guessing here. I, I feel really confident to the point that I'd be like, this is 100% one, and if it's not, then you are allowed to slap me. Everyone Vecna targets has something in their life, S something that's... Hurting them. <laughs> so, almost everyone, them. I gotta ask, what's the deal with... The Steve and Dustin friendship seeming to be gone now. Steve always seems irritated with Dustin. It's strange because, as far as I understood it, viewers really liked the fact that those two were buddies in season three, and now that's pretty much gone. They still seem friendly a lot, but there's a lot of arguing and unpleasantness between them. Also, what's with the constant nagging to get Nancy to think about Steve? It's all the time. I suppose it could be the case of... Cause I, a lot of it is coming from Robin. That maybe Robin wants to see them together since she knows Steve still likes her. Still, it just feels pushy. So it's weird. You won't! They got their uniforms, their Son, jackets. We, we just have to sacrifice the sacrificing people, you know, with their rituals. I like the town meeting scene. I like seeing all the parents. It's nice to see their involvement. I wish they had more of an involvement, but I get it. They're background characters for the most part. But any scenes with them I appreciate. Just show that they are trying to be involved in their children's lives and they care. Kids definitely did get a lot more freedom in the 80s as compared to today. So that's pretty true to reality. However, the fact that all of these adults are listening to a high school student talk about how these people are satanic cult people. Really? Okay. <laughs> but we gotta get that jock plot keep going forward, so I suppose... Then with Mike's group, we have them getting Susie to do the hacking for them because she's a nice, convenient hacker genius for them now. Yay. Ugh. But it's fine. If it gets us from point A to point B, even if it's dumb, let's just keep the story moving. And that whole family is extra weird. But it serves for entertainment, so all right then. Set off. To understand yeah, that some kind of upside down do creature until we find a way into the upside down. You need all out of your powers. How to use like mind powers to get into girl. our world? She had superpowers. superpowers. Yeah. Sort of like how Al got hey, uh, into theirs, Henderson's except not, uh, they can Curtis. physically affect Curtis. things, unlike her. No, 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 no. She's fine. Is Mental? that the understanding here? I am hating all of the eleven flashback stuff as usual. Seeing her around all these other kids with psychic abilities, it just doesn't fit the previous season 11, so it's just so frustrating. I know, I know, I keep telling myself, let it go, move on. So, it looks like 
the group with Nancy and them, yeah, they are still talking about how gotta go and kill this thing from the upside down, but this guy has weird powers, so I don't really understand how it's an upside down creature. I'm sure we'll all work it out as the show goes. I'm just trying to understand how it, how it all works, because it's certainly conflicting with prior seasons. But maybe all will be revealed, and I'll be amazed and take back all my complaints. But I doubt it. On the Russian front, I saw that pretty quickly when they were talking in the safe house or wherever that is that Yuri stores his imports that they were going to have him swap places with Murray. So that Murray is going to be Yuri. And Yuri is going to be Murray, the American prisoner, since I guess they've never seen Yuri. Uh, yeah, I suppose that makes sense, because he was connected to the guard he betrayed. Theoretically, only the guard knows what he looks like. So it totally works. And I think this plan is going to be funny, so I'm down for it. In Utah, those crazy, weird unlike kids kids that was pretty amusing actually to watch them distract the father so Susie could do her ridiculous hacking I was entertained which is clearly the children's purpose so it served it well and in Russia Hopper who when he tussled with the guy at first I was just confused like why are you doing this I don't understand I am not following did I miss something but then I'm thinking about it as they're walking back to the cell. Did he do that so he could grab a key or a weapon? But I feel like a weapon would have been noticed, so what? And then it reveals he stole a lighter so that they can use fire against this Demogorgon when they have to fight it later. That was pretty neat. Still, saying something about somebody's son. Not cool. Not cool. I guess he knew the guy enough, though, to know that was the one thing that would get him to start a fight. And it worked. Good job, Hopper. It's more familiar. Lovers Better like take a dive! This is... confounding. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It didn't leave an opening. In the earlier seasons, when the gate was open, the barrier between the two dimensions was essentially thinner, so there could be crossover from either side. And every now and then, an opening would appear. For instance, in the first season, Nancy saw an opening because the gate was open and they spontaneously appear. Or a creature has to be... I think it's that a creature has to be near the point And then some kind of thin opening happens. Like it happens in the high school wall even at, in the buyer's house when, when Will is right there and the mom can't get him through the opening because it's not quite a complete opening, unless that was a Demogorgon. Either way, something was right there and Joyce Byers couldn't get through when it didn't quite come through either. These things can't just open gates. <laughs> it never worked that way before. I am so confuddled. We have the kids at the lake and then there's some time spent with Eleven in the lab again. She's doing the whole memory thing in her mind again. Trying to remember the conveniently forgotten memory. That will, I'm sure, make it be like, Ooh, look, this was happening all along through all the seasons. Even though it's BS. Anyway, the guard that talks to her sometimes and always acts really creepy and weird. Off-putting, I suppose, would be the proper term here. He's being tortured by Brenner and some other guards with like electric rods, batons. It's probably my bias that this guy has such off-putting behavior and creepy behavior that I instinctively don't trust anything he says or does. And so even when I'm watching him be tortured by Brenner's people, I'm sitting here like, did he somehow set this all up? Every time he claims Brenner is the one manipulating, I always just feel like he's the one manipulating. And I'm not sure 
if that's intentional on the part of the show or it's just my bias that I don't trust this guard. <laughs> and so anytime he says anything, uh, I just immediately go, mm-mm, no. There's a scene while we're still at the lab where Eleven g gets bullied by other psychic kids in the rainbow room. She's bullied by kids and I'm sitting here going, no, 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 no. That didn't happen. She wasn't bullied. This is the chick who could stand up to adults. Come on. I do not believe you, Joe. You're so full of it. I feel like the show is trying to lead us to believe she was bullied. So in response, she murdered everyone. Why would I believe that? That's dumb. <laughs> Uh, back to the kids in the boat. Well, good for them. I'm happy to see these people go and try to save them. Oh, I didn't think he'd go, though. I thought I'd be too scared. Okay, I didn't mention before, the people in the boat are Nancy, Steve, Robin, and Eddie. And then Dustin, Max, and Lucas are back on, on land. The four go out on the boat. Steve goes underwater and sees a gate, but then he's really dumb. Oh, it's an obvious gate, by the way, guys. It's not a, oh, this could maybe be a door or a passageway to the other dimension. No, it's a glowing red thing, like a visibly glowing red opening. And what does this guy do? Swim right up to it and look right into it. <laughs> he didn't need to do that, okay. So then he gets grabbed and pulled in. And the others go in after him. And I was surprised that he went to. But they all do. So yay! Here comes the rescue party. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier, because it was such a brief scene, is that the two police officers, with the parents, I talked about them at the town meeting, but then they also drove back to the house looking for the kids. Nancy and Mike's mom called the police. So they are looking for the kids. A lot of the townspeople are thinking that they're now cult members and things, which could be a threat for them. And it's just better to find the kids and bring them home. So while the others are out on the lake, the cops do show up and they get caught because they, they try to distract them from the lake for some reason. I don't really think it was necessary, but I know, I'm not really sure what they're thinking half the time. That air you're breathing is toxic. Enjoy. Well, let's hope he gets out of that. Because I like Steve. The episode ends with Steve in the Upside Down. In some trouble. He's being attacked by those weird haunted mansion bat things. The Upside Down is now a spooky spooky place, as I said <laughs> in a previous episode. It doesn't really resemble the Upside Down very much anymore. Which is unfortunate used to have this otherworldly feel to it, and now it is like a haunted area. It's bizarre. I, I don't know what they were thinking with it this season. I'm, I've not been happy. We are left with Mike and them possibly knowing where Eleven is now, or at least having a better idea of where to look. The group of the three, Dustin, Max, and Lucas on land, were taken by the cops. So they'll either be at the police station or maybe they'll just take them home. I'm unclear on that. The four on the boat are now... Well, we only saw Steve in the Upside Down being attacked, but the other three were diving in to go get him. They will be in the Upside Down soon as well in the next episode. Then where we left off with Eleven, she woke up thinking she killed everybody. What I basically said before, but she now explicitly said it. So that's definitely what we're supposed to think since that's what she thinks. Even though I'm sure I'm not the only viewer going, mm, I don't know if she did it. They wouldn't be making it such a mystery if it was, I think as well. And as I stated from the very beginning in the very first episode, the opening scene, when, and they showed all those dead bodies in the lab and tried to lead us to believe, ooh, she maybe did this? Oh, what's this? No, I immediately called, no way. You'll never convince me that the Eleven in the first three seasons could do something like this in the past and be who she was in those three seasons. But then 
I also don't believe she could have been raised with all those kids and be the 11 from the first three seasons, so I suppose, what do I know? However, I'll still stand by. It's not her. I think it's that creepy dude. That guard who I suspect is one. So this is where we leave everyone with the, oh no, are they going to kill Steve? And they better not, because I like him. I think he stands a good chance of survival since the th other three dove in pretty fast to come after him. So he should be saved, but that doesn't mean his injuries won't make and he could die later or maybe it's just too late. They could still kill him. I just hope they won't. This brings us to the episode rating. I like this episode. I still loathe the, the lab parts because it's just one big retcon and it's never going to change because they're obviously making this a very season-long thing that I, I guarantee is going to be because they're trying to convince us that this was their plan all along. But it wasn't. And at the same time, I understand wanting to tie in all the seasons so that with the fifth and final season this way it'll seem like there was this whole five season long story problem is they don't really work that way so that is automatically gonna dock this score by a whole rank because i despise this very very evident retconning and changing 11 and brenner's past and their history it's making me mad the upside down creature that I initially was very interested in and curious about. I already know I'm going to be disappointed with whatever's going on since this new enemy, new creature doesn't act like any of the others. That will bring it down one full number rank. I would say this episode is as good as the previous episode. And so it'll still get a high score. It's still an episode I liked. Because I like everything else that's going on except for the retconning and stuff with the lab and Eleven. I even like the Eleven lab stuff with Brenner and Owens. I just don't like that they're changing the past to make the future thing happen, whatever that's going to be. So I still rate it high, like the previous episode, and I gave it an 8. Without the retconning stuff, both of these episodes, I would be giving them 9s. But with it, they're 8s. So this one will be an 8 too, and that is what I gave it. Thank you for watching, and remember, stay entertained.